Hello viewers, my name is Dr. Rajul Dutt. Today, I'll deal with the topic market segmentation. Now, as the name suggests, market segmentation. Market means the number or the size of the customers for a particular product. And segmentation is dividing and subdividing of the market into a more homogeneous group. So, I'll discuss this further in the definition also. So, market segmentation is the research that determines how an organization divides its customers into smaller groups on various factors including maybe age, income, personality, etc. These segments can later be used to optimize products and advertising to different customers meaning thereby that uh, the, uh, for example advertising now advertising is uh, maybe for one market or maybe when we talk about segmentation we make different groups and then to suit the different groups maybe on the basis of language so for example one group of the, of the target market we have selected in Uttar Pradesh where the regional language is Hindi maybe West Bengal where the regional language is Bengali and therefore, on the one aspect, if I'm take, uh, taking for example, so this is where the segmentation helps. By understanding market segments, one can leverage this targeting in product, sales and framing marketing strategies. So for a different group, a different strategy is to be used or should be used rather. Companies who properly segment their market enjoy significant advantages. Using different types of market segmentation allows marketing manager to target customers based on unique characteristics, their personal characteristics of the, of the group or of the individual, create more effective marketing campaigns and find opportunities in the market. So, if I talk about in similar, word, simpler words, market segmentation helps to get to know your customers, identify what's needed in the market segment and determine how you can best meet those needs with your product or service. In this way, market segmentation uh, refers to the various segments of the market based on common characteristics of customers. Now, having said this, let's, uh, I'll come on to the definition been given by Kotler. Now, according to Kotler, market segmentation is subdividing of a market that is a total market of heterogeneous uh, uh, in nature, the, the market here means the number of people or the number of uh, potential customers. They are uh, heterogeneous in nature um, on the basis of the characteristics on so many factors. So the segmentation is a deliberate dividing and subdividing the total market into smaller groups into a distinct and increasing homogeneous. The more we segment the market on various factors and so, and so the whole objective of dividing this heterogeneous market is to get an uh, increasing homogeneous that is more a homogeneous subgroups of customers where any group can conceivably where the decision maker or the marketing manager deliberately selects it says conceivably be selected as a target market where the marketing manager or the decision maker selects a particular market what, what which we call it as a target market target market why because now the whole marketing strategies will be focused on the selected group the group with the marketer manager marketing manager selects to be met with distinct marketing mix now we have discussed in the earlier, earlier videos also marketing mix we call it as popularly known as four p's that is product price promotions and place so all of the four p's can be you know the different marketing mix or different combination of the uh, four p's therefore be specific for a particular market which we call it as a target market 
So that is whenever a market for a product or service consists of two or more buyers, the market is capable of being segmented, that is divided into meaningful buyer groups. Meaningful buyer groups is here the marketing manager is will get, you know, will collect the data, will collect the information and will focus on this buyer group which we intend to say or which we need to say a target market. Now, from the point of view of the marketing manager, the person who intends to sell or want to sell the uh, product, the seller's thinking passes through three stages. Now, the three stages is what? Whether, whether to go for mass marketing, whether to go for a product variety marketing, or whether should focus on target marketing. Now, these decisions are mainly dependent upon the nature and the type of the product also. Now, what do we mean by when we say mass marketing? The seller produces a single product in masses. Masses is the total number of people with, with no uh, major distinction among the people. This is what we call it as masses. Promotes and distributes products to masses to all the buyers. The marketing mix, therefore, remains same for all the customers. That is what I have discussed uh, just now that the four P's there is no need to have a different uh, uh, combination of marketing mix the same the the main the one uh, idea or the main aspect of one strategy which the marketing manager uh, makes if, with, with the help of the four P's remains for the entire market second is the product variety marketing here the seller produces two or more products that have different features, styles, quality, sizes, etc. The idea uh, behind this, uh, what we call it as philosophy, is that consumers have different tastes and preferences and seek variety and change. Now, for example, in a, in a particular, uh, if we focus on how where there is a husband, wife and the two children. Now the two children, they they come up, they are the offspring from the same parent, but uh, they have, they are into the same uh, uh, environment, they are, the, they are being brought up in the same environment, but their likings and dislikings are quite different from each other. So this is, uh, this again goes for the uh, people also as customers for the total market market now maybe it is a mass marketing but here for example if I go for mass marketing could be like for products like vegetables fruit milk eggs etc and uh, for product variety for example if I take uh, say ice cream so ice cream is one but the flavors are different now different flavors that means they are to cater with the same product category to the various types of people who likes a particular flavor. So the more the flavor is, the more the intention is to cater to more and more people. Now this is the uh, idea behind making the product variety that means giving various options within the same product category to the customers. Target marketing. Now target marketing is here the seller identifies market segments selects one or more of them it's not we are talking about one when we divide and subdivide the market so we have got as a choice the marketing manager has got a choice to select either one or more of the different groups because the marketing manager now knows that with this with the uh, with the different groups he has divided and subdivided rather and the different group, they are more or less homogeneous in nature so that he may cater to the different requirement, different needs of the customer belonging to different set of groups. So, well, selects uh, one or more uh, of them and develop products and marketing mixes tailored to each segment. Now, tailored here, um, I mean that it is the different marketing mix of our, a different uh, group or a different strategy altogether to cater to or to reach to the different groups. Therefore, the target marketing calls for three major steps. Now, three major steps as mentioned here. One is market segmentation, then is market 
targeting and market positioning. Now, a brief introduction about all uh, these three because we we'll, I'll be discussing a little later about these things and these will be coming on and on as we proceed with the uh, lecture. So market segmentation is, as I've discussed, dividing a market into distinct groups of buyers who might call for separate products. Market targeting is the second step, or rather I should say, is what is market targeting, evaluating each segment attractiveness, uh, attractiveness in terms of as to uh, trying to understand the uh, basic necessity of uh, uh, different groups and selecting one or more of the market segment. And then uh, after uh, the research work, the one or two groups may be selected. That means from the various options, the, it, it becomes prerogative for the uh, marketing manager to go for one or more of the segments depending upon again uh, I should say depending upon the again the capabilities of the organization the uh, financial uh, condition of the uh, organization as to how much uh, the uh, marketing manager has got the budget or maybe allocated I, I will be discussing the allocation of the marketing budget a little later so market positioning is the third step is where the market positioning uh, in marketing positioning is setting the competitive positioning for the product competitive positioning is where the, uh, the product can make a leap into the group or the we can fix up a position the product in, in the markets in such a manner that it moves on now having a brief idea about as to uh, what these uh, terminologies means to us let's before going further into the uh, discussion of the market segmentation let's see as to what is the importance of market segmentation it is very important for us to go uh, ahead for the uh, discussion so the various importance uh, are uh, uh, for market segmentation has been designed. I have selected five major and the following are the advantages of market segmentation. One is the allocation of marketing budget. Now, as we all know, all the organizations, they have got uh, the limitation of money is always in scarcity. And therefore, it is not uh, such a case where you select a particular segment where the maybe the, uh, the more number of the customers are more. But or the product nature is such a manner where you require more money as far as production is concerned. So the amount of the financial um, uh, status or the financial uh, aspect of the organization have to be taken into consideration because to cater more segments, you require more money in terms of because more people, more machinery, more uh, infrastructure, so on and so forth. So uh, allocation of marketing budget is where it is on the basis of uh, what we call it as the marketing budget is adjusted for a particular region or locality. It is like of no use to allocate huge budget where sales are limited, maybe due to less population density. Now, maybe the area is more geographical area is more, but the people are less. Maybe the uh, geographical area is educate people the the density of the population is adequate but the buying capacity of the people of a particular region is not say uh, is not appreciable so so many factors come in so it helps us in selecting as to how on the in which region uh, the the money should be or the budget should be allocated so that because i said if we are segmenting market dividing and we are selecting two or more now when we talk about two or more that means the total budget has to be divided or has to be allocated between the selected segments number two is adjustment of product and marketing appeals now this market segmentation helps in you know to adjust the marketing appeals marketing appeals for example if i say advertising now advertising again is very important so if the advertising you know the it should be based on the uh, various aspects maybe regional language maybe the culture and subculture of the people uh, geographical location so 
so many factors are taken into. So if we segment the market, we study the uh, particular segment so that, for example, if the people uh, more are more of, say, Hindi speaking and we, we go for the advertising, say, in English. So maybe the larger section of the uh, people will not be able to understand. So where the people do not understand a particular language, so we can make the adjustment with the language. We select the language which is more familiar with the particular segment which we want to catch up. So uh, maybe it presents an opportunity to understand the market. The seller can adjust therefore to, to so as to attract the maximum number of customers by various media and uh, the various um, advertising appeals in continuation it is better position to spot marketing opportunities now when we divide and subdivide that means we uh, the marketing opportunities opportunities to sell the product opportunities to understand a particular group opportunities to adjust uh, so as i said budget to adjust the um, advertising and promotional aspects so it helps in uh, cater to cater those opportunities and to learn about the threats as well of a particular segment so uh, when we when i discuss about say better position to spot marketing opportunities it is the producer therefore can have a fair estimate of the volume of his sales and the possibilities of furthering his sales that is as to how to grow whether there there the market can be expanded or uh, say maybe on the basis of say uh, income group or uh, the economic condition of the people of the area so the risk maybe for example in the areas where response from the customer is poor the strategy or uh, the marketing strategy or the market say for example the combination of the usage of the four piece can be again readjusted so as to um, to us to understand and uh, to uh, to exploit the opportunity or to meet the requirement if uh, uh, has there is something wrong with it for example maybe on the basis of price people they want the product but they do not want at a particular price so those can be again readjusted last is the evaluation of the marketing activities now evaluation is what we think what we plan there has there every possibility that the, there are some variation as to what we want to achieve and as to what we said so uh, it gives us you know uh, it, it helps us in understanding for example in two three um, segments if uh, some segment we have uh, selected uh, the marketing strategies are not working so we can evaluate whether to withdraw the product or to readjust the marketing program so it helps the manufacturer to find out and compare the market potential of the products and if the product becomes obsolete then the product could be diversified or discontinued now discontinued is here i mean to refer if we are not able to promote the sales if maybe because the in a particular segment the competitors are or the competitive position is high or the competitor is uh, known or he is having the largest uh, section of the market share so uh, the it gives us an uh, idea as a marketing manager to uh, withdraw the product and to put the product into some other segment or to some other area now the types of market segmentation now this this understanding of the types of market segmentation will help us in deciding on the the basis for segmentation so the, there are large four types of uh, uh, largely we talk about the on the basis of which the uh, market is being uh, segmented broadly if i say the the market can be segmented on the basis of whether it is for the consumer product or it is for the industrial product or consumer market or the industrial market and therefore i will be discussing at the segment the basis for the segmentation uh, for a consumer market separately and for the industrial market uh, separately let's understand first as to what do we what are these different types of uh, market segmentation in short now the first comes is the uh, graphic segmentation 
Now, what is graphic segmentation? That is on the basis of the geography of the uh, of the maybe country or maybe or maybe of a city, whatever it is, whatever the market we are taking into consideration, how in depth we are talking about. Say, for example, we talk about uh, uh, on the basis of the national uh, boundaries. So, the on the basis we can comfortably can divide into, for example, north, south, east, west. In certain cases, for example, if we take a, a railways, so the the total uh, 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 India has been divided according to their product is north, south, east, eastern railway, northern railway, southern railway, western railway, and the central railway. So to, to control, they have segmented the total uh, uh, geographical area into five major uh, segments. So this is. Uh, the aspect with, with graphic segmentation we have been I'm taking into consideration it could be on on with the on the basis of say uh, segmentation on the basis of cities as well uh, majorly it refers to, to if i say to be defined geographical boundaries like states cities or types areas like climate even they can be divided on the basis of the climate, whether the particular say, whether there are a particular place, the climate is hot, whether it is the climate is uh, it's a rainy uh, season almost the year, or maybe some areas which are very cold in nature. So a different uh, they become a different segment. Again, we can again we think about in segmenting the basic on the basis of graphics uh, the geography of the country like uh, urban semi urban and rural for as far as india is concerned we know that the 75% of the total population belongs to the uh, rural area so and therefore the uh, one has to decide upon to if we broadly if we define that the the total uh, uh, nation can be divided on the basis of uh, this that is uh, the population on the basis of the population that is uh, what is the rural population percentage of the rural population and the percentage of the urban population this is just an idea we'll be discussing and i'll be discussing on the base uh, on the uh, basis of the seg consumer segmentation the second is the demographic segmentation uh, the demographic segmentation refers to the say data what should, uh, statistical data rather about a group of people we can include or yeah, on the basis of age, gender, income, education, family size, religion. In India, it plays an important role because the religion, you know, we have got four major religions and all other religions as well. So uh, we cannot have one um, uh, aspect or the one marketing mix as far as religion is concerned. Whereas in other countries, on Western countries, more or less the religion of the total of the population is of they follow one religion. So as far as India is concerned, we have got so many religions. So this is again uh, plays an important role of, uh, for the study of a marketing manager. The, the third is the socio-psychological segmentation. This segmentation uh, is the study about the different social class. Now, social class, for example, whether it is a lower class or a middle class and an upper class, again, the middle class can be divided into lower, middle, middle and upper middle. So, depending upon that, this helps us, this study helps us or if we are able to, uh, you know, divide on the basis, I'm sorry, on the basis of this. So, the different uh, social classes are there having different spending behavior pattern on the basis of the social class, the the segments have different uh, uh, spending uh, pattern of their hearts to how do they spend their money in uh, buying the products need orientation segmentation now this type of segmentation is done on the basis of the needs of a group uh, for example maybe for a particular product one is one is buying because uh, uh, they're looking out for comfort convenience other they merely buy it because for appreciation they want to you know say what we call, call it as maybe for pride uh, for position so there are various aspects if uh, people they are buying the uh, the same product uh, having a different uh, uh, requirement or the need to fulfill these are all mostly related with the psychological aspects as well and the last is here in this is volume segmentation. Now this involves segmenting 
of market on the basis of heavy, medium, light, or no user. For example, if I say cigarette, now there are heavy smokers, there are medium smokers, again, there are light users occasionally, and there are people who do not even uh, smoke. So these are the, on the basis of the volume, on the basis of the, as to uh, the involves, uh, the, the segments are being made on the basis of the volume they buy. I'm going to discuss about the basis for segmenting consumer markets. That is, this consumer market and there is a basis for segmenting industrial market. So in this section, I will discuss about basis for segmenting the consumer market. And this will be followed by part three in the concluding video of market segmentation in which I will discuss about the behavioral segmentation, that is the product related segmentation and the basis for segmenting the industrial market. Now coming back, let's start with the basis for segmenting the consumer market. There is no single way to segment a market. A marketer has to try different segmentation variables alone and in combination to find the best way to view market structure. It requires a company to gather specific information, data about customers and analyze it to identify patterns that can be used to create segments. Common characteristics in customer segments can guide as to how a company markets to individual segments and what products or services it promotes to them. For example, uh, if I take an example, uh, maybe a small business selling handmade guitars might decide to promote a lower price product to younger guitarists because they may have less uh, disposable income as compared to the senior guitarist who would buy a higher priced electronic guitar. So this is how you, the, this is one variable which comes for segmenting as far as maybe the age is concerned about the customer. Therefore, customer satisfaction begins with gathering and analyzing data and ends with acting on the information gathered in a way that is appropriate and effective. The major variables of uh, the segmenting a consumer market therefore are the geographic variable, demographic variable, psychographic variable and behavioral segmentation. Now geographic, demographic and psychographic they are consumer related segmentation and the behavior seg segmentation is by and large related with the product related uh, various factors will, to study. So this I will take in my next uh, uh, video. So let's start with the geographic segmentation. Now geographic segmentation this calls for dividing the market into different geographic areas. A company may decide, for, for example, to operate in one or few geographical areas, maybe uh, on the basis of, for example, lighting. If I say a uh, say product, I take it as uh, randomly, it's like coffee. I'm talking about in the uh, Indian context. So coffee is being light maybe in the one part of the country and may not be light in the other part of the country. So the product again decides as to where to cater and to where the uh, most of the marketing mix strategies to how to foot upon those. So this gives us, us an idea. Now for example if I say in South the coffee is popular. So the whole idea is to make the uh, whole marketing strategy is to focus towards South India where this is coffee by natural they like it. But again, if we see, if we look upon the opportunity, saying not, we can, uh, yeah, a company can think in introducing this product 
and to explore the market. Now, for that, it requires you know uh, to study the customer uh, more closely and to understand the customer more closely. Again, these three variables plays a very important role in giving us an idea and reaching to a, a conclusion about the consumer profile, so that if you we develop these profiles and to select so that I can fix it, I can uh, make my strategy market uh, with the help of the four P's to enter into the market or to cater to the market where the product is existing and is enjoying its market share. So the, the graphic, uh, geographic for example, the, we can divide the, the if I, in Indian context we are talking about in, on the basis of region that is in north, south, east, west, central. So uh, maybe it, it can be only by north, south, east, west, but in certain cases where we divide the, the whole uh, so that you know we can study uh, more uh, objectively uh, as far as the because uh, the northern Indian characteristics with the south Indian are quite different than the people in the east of India. They are quite different. People in the western India they have got the different. Uh, uh, maybe due to the regional disparities. Now again, we can again, for example, if I say north. Now in north, now the, to break up again, to explore the various again segments into uh, smaller uh, segments, it would be city size. Whether it is a metro, we want to focus on metro cities, whether we want to focus on small cities or whether into towns. Now again, there is a uh, we look upon, we again go for again a micro segment geographic segmentation is to evaluate, to understand the density of the area in terms of whether we want to cater to the urban market, to the semi-urban market or to the rural market. Let's not forget because the urban and semi-urban uh, hypothetically can, it comprises to say uh, maybe 25 to 30 percent of the total population whereas the 70 percent of the uh, Indian population still are related to rural areas. So one should keep in mind again rural area this is again a very very big market in terms of the density or the, the size of the population uh, related to the uh, rural areas. So the second part of it is the variable is the demographic segmentation. The demographic segmentation is related with the profile of the customer uh, in individually and to uh, rate or to you know to come to the conclusion about the maybe the single person, one single person or maybe the group of people under to whom we want to cater. So the demographic factors a most popular basis for segmenting customer groups. One good reason is that consumer needs and wants vary closely with demographic factors. Following are the uh, what we call it as demographics variables which are being used for in market segmentation. Now the, uh, the, if we say for example the first factor is age. Now age, consumer needs and wants changes with age and some companies use age as the segmentation and offer different products or using products, uh, different marketing approaches for different uh, age groups. So clearly determines, you know, for example, if we take about the small children where the decision making is in other say, say from uh, say up to 12, then to 13, 19 when the child is uh, you know uh, comes into the teens he or she has got their own aspirations their own likings maybe about food maybe about uh, uh, movies maybe about uh, fashion dresses clothes uh, and uh, so and so forth another important is the gender now the gender is whether we are talking about with the product that is related to um, male and female both or uh, that is what we call it as a unisex product or it is for male customers or the female customers it helps us in dividing the total uh, population therefore into on the basis of the gender on the basis of the uh, sex so the sex segmentation has long been used in clothing hairdressing cosmetics 
magazines, and so on and so forth. Another factor which comes into demographic is the marital status, whether the uh, individual is married or unmarried. Because, for example, it, uh, married, uh, so the whole, let's say, the income, it, what a, a person is, uh, is getting, the is generating income, for example, monthly the salary for that matter. So the if the the married so then the spending nature of the salary would be quite different from the person who is unmarried. The unmarried person, whether male or female, will uh, you know will spend majority of the major portion of the salary he or she is getting on herself or himself. Income plays a very important role. So uh, we divide the total society into uh, on the basis of the income the individual is earning for example i've taken as uh, under 15000 then 15000 to 50000 again 50000 to 1 lakh and 1 lakh to 2 lakhs and so on and so forth so if my product is uh, for example is uh, high priced so definitely as far as income is concerned my uh, segment would be the people who are into the bracket of say uh, 1 lakh to 2 lakhs and above if my if if it is a premium um, uh, product for for example if the product is uh, not premium it is for uh, it you know it is a low quality maybe low quality product then i will focus on the people who are earning say between uh, 15000 to 50000 because the, it depends what what will be the disposable income for the consumers to buy the products and that is where they first they satisfy their basic needs and the income then remaining would be spent on the various other products. Occupation again uh, decides upon the nature of the products the uh, consumer will buy. Now whether they, uh, the segment is of, uh, largely of the, so we want to focus on students, whether on managers, professionals, housewife they all have uh, have got their own uh, way of spending and uh, on the products they require professionals for example they they may they focus on their uh, clothes they on the uh, uh, attires on the accessories to carry for example maybe a office uh, bag maybe good shoes a tie uh, cuff links so on and so forth Again, education is we divide the whole total population on the basis of the in, in education they have uh, attained. For example, whether they have done high school, intermediate, graduate, postgraduate, technical people. So all uh, they, it helps us in segmenting the uh, group. Again, in India, as, as I said earlier, also in my earlier previous video, that the religion is in, in India the we can divide the total uh, population into on the basis of the religion that is Hindu, Muslim, Sikhs, Christians and others. So uh, it plays a very important role. For example, if it is, uh, it decides, you know, sometimes it becomes very difficult in consumer behavior, I'll be with these aspects more into it. But for example, if we say, if anything which is has green color, so most of the Muslims, they go for it and so on and so forth so as far as color is concerned as far as language is concerned as far as their uh, lifestyle is concerned it is more related with the uh, religion as well and religion again plays a very important role one has to take care while in for making uh, advertisements uh, for example so uh, one has to take a great care so that the uh, you know the emotions of the other uh, uh, religious groups should not be, uh, you know, should not be hurt in any manner, in any manner. So it becomes very evident and important for a marketing manager, therefore, to look into these aspects. Nonetheless, it decides upon as to, for example, if uh, my product, uh, hypothetically, uh, my product is, uh, uh, say, on meat, I supply meat, but uh, say, so I will cater mostly the Muslim sex and Christians, whereas Hindu, they won't prefer it. So this will help me in segmenting as the, on the basis of the religion. Now, family life cycle, this is again uh, very interesting to uh, discuss. 
so uh, young and single when the person is young and single so uh, whatever he is uh, earning so the person will uh, spend on himself or herself then the person uh, the for example this boy gets married so young and married now this uh, man who was uh, uh, spending most of his uh, income uh, on himself now this uh, income will be the, and the purchasing was related to maybe shirts and trousers and shoes and sports goods and uh, products like shaving creams and all now he gets married so the the income more or less we take it as remains the same so the buying again goes on sari suits sandals cosmetics and all so uh, with the only in the change of say the person gets uh, married the the buying automatically changes a great change a great shift in the, uh, the requirement for the product it changes uh, then again if you move a little more forward young married plus one child so uh, again the earlier they were spending on uh, shirts and sarees and suits and sandals and what not now with the when the child comes into this family the most of the income they, they spend on not on the goods or the products they were using earlier or they were buying earlier now it goes on the child care products the doctors the baby nap nappy the uh, child food the, and so on and so forth so the main focus or the buying would be related with the child now this married plus two children now the the income is you know in getting these children it will to brought up these children more so more be money spent on say schools uh, fees books uh, uh, their the tuitions and uh, uniforms and so on and so forth so these kinds of you know there is the major shift so automatically with the if the you know when there is a change from in the life cycle only if i take one factor so the buying of the products it automatically changes now there is an old couple now again it, they come back when they young and married but the old couple is when when they do ch two children they have uh, you know they uh, they go out for their own services because they are now educated and they fly off to different uh, places so the couple remains you know alone now the old couples again they will spend whatever the earnings are on say uh, on medicines on health care on repair of the uh, family gadget uh, uh, household gadgets and uh, so forth and again out of these two one uh, leaves the planet so one of the two remain remain as single now again when this person is single if he or his or her buying again would be more on say to protect himself or herself and will be it will be related to uh, say on health uh, aspects and uh, say maybe doctors maybe on medical aspects so this uh, why i have extended the discussion on this that with this uh, changes in the uh, combination of the in the life cycle so uh, the buying automatically you know the requirement of the uh, household it changes fast so uh, if other factors remain even constant though but it changes so it is very important for any marketing manager while segmenting uh, i mean by doing uh, fixing up as to which segment the uh, you as a uh, entrepreneur or you as a, uh, a business person so this plays a very important it is very important to study and understand the dynamics of the family life cycle the third is the psychographic segmentation it is all related with uh, more or less with the psychology of the uh, people and not not the pressure but here some you know some the person becomes a little more uh, say choosy for example if i say uh, these factors remains like in psychographic segmentation buyers are divided into different groups like based on social class lifestyle personality characteristics now the people in the same demographics group can have different psychographics makeup now if you look don't look upon it and we look upon say for example lifestyle now the person you know maybe in any group for example in any income group 
if he or she is conservative or whether the person is liberal, whether the person is status seeker. There are people who buy products just to maintain their status in the society to, uh, you know, to look upon uh, to a particular group. That is what they call it as a reference group. Not because they like it, but because they want to refer to a, for example, uh, if I say it's a sports person, so the person who is sports lover, his, uh, his or her buying would be more on buying the uh, products related with sports, the sports shoes, the track suits, uh, and um, other things like related with the sports events. So this is where, you know, the, this is the person who wants to live a life in a different manner. Whether the person is health and fitness conscious, whether adventure some, so the 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 person chooses the lifestyle, and with the chosen lifestyle, the buying changes automatically. Now, social class this again plays a very important role. Uh, the social class is based, you know, the segmentation is done on the basis of the economic condition of the people, for example, a lower class, a middle class, and a rich class, rich class, for example, an upper class. So, uh, looking upon as to uh, what the, the, by the product has to, for whom the product has been made, as far as, for example, if I talk about price, if the price of the product is high, premium, for example. So, for, if we take, we take, for example, cars, so cars are, you know, we know there is a base model, there is a, a average model, and then there is a premium model. So, the car remains the same, the company remains the same, but they give certain benefits and we move upwards and, you know, they add additional features into the car and therefore they makes the distinction on the, uh, pr the prices and divide the whole society on the basis of the income earned and so that the product it uses. For example, if it, if it is a base price car, so all those, you know, the middle, it is, for example, it is being focused on to the middle class for the upper middle class. And for example, if it is a premium, so it, it is more focused on the rich or the upper class of the society. Now, personality, for example, the personality is a person, uh, maybe, you know, uh, introvert, extrovert, on the basis of the uh, so marketers have uh, also used personality variable to segment the market. Uh, many uh, successful market uh, segmentation strategies based on pers uh, personality have been used for such products. So, uh, because if the, um, if the person is outgoing, it is an extrovert, so, the, you know, for, it is very, it becomes easy for to fit in because he, uh, the, uh, as a customer, he or she explains to the researcher or to the marketing or to the salesperson as to what he or she requires, but an introvert person, it is very difficult, you know, a lot of effort has to be made by the uh, salespeople of, the, of a company. Now, this completes with the uh, customer-related segmentation, that is the area which is, report, uh, which is largely related with the uh, uh, people. Now, in the next segment, uh, in the for, uh, next uh, part of the video, I'll discuss about the behavioral segment. Though it is all one, when we talk about basis for segmenting consumer market, the four major variables are the geographical variable, the demographic variable, the psychographic variable, and the behavioral level. But, you know, to understand and to uh, to understand, you know, clearly about the, these factors are related to the uh, consumer, whereas now the behavioral aspect, they are related with the products. Now, the behavioral aspect, product related aspects related to the segmentation uh, is comprised with, of, of the various uh, examples of it. Uh, and this, uh, it is very important for us now to understand as to what that this behavioral segmentation means to us. Behavioral segmentation is a marketing strategy based on the actual consuming uh, consumer by buyer behavior. It divides the market into groups of customers according to their knowledge, um, attitude towards uh, use of or the maybe the response of the to a product 
the behavioral segmentation uh, if say divides consumers according to behavior patterns as they interact with the company or with the organization so uh, basically it is uh, for a marketer it is to understand the pattern of the behavior however the advantages of grouping customers into different segments based on their behavior could be one is personalization that is uh, i mean by personalization is to, to understand how different groups of customers should be targeted with different offers so again you know it comes that for a different group a set of people of which we call it as a different uh, segments we deliberately uh, make the segments so that the four p's or the marketing strategy should be uh, designed so as to suit the particular segment we want to uh, uh, understand we want to cater uh, it also helps us you know the behavioral uh, study of the behavioral pattern into predictive aspects that is to uh, to use uh, sometimes uh, historical patterns to predict and influence future customers behavior patterns now uh, in uh, again you know the past data becomes very important for us as to how does this uh, the behavior if at all changing and if changing as to what could what are the various parameters on which for example if we talk about there are you know cultural aspects subcultural aspects uh, social aspects and the over a period of time the value system changes so this is again helps us in uh, understanding as to uh, for example uh, from a joint family the nuclear families uh, are being formed and uh, more and more women they are coming uh, uh, they are into uh, into they are studying uh, you know they are getting education and on the basis of that they are now again joining the uh, industries they are joining different streams uh, and to give the uh, to for for the jobs so that has made the the whole composition a little change as far as india is concerned again um, one important aspect is related to uh, maybe forecasting now looking at each segment patterns one can identify the trends and more effectively plan for the future so uh, understanding the behavior pattern again uh, helps us in uh, in forecasting as to what would happen in the future and uh, one important again aspect advantage of the behavioral segmentation is the budget allocation um, since the market or no which segment spend the most and how they spend can better allocate his marketing efforts to target them so uh, it helps and you know in budget allocation as to uh, what is the trend in each market and therefore marketing manager's job in allocating the budget which is limited so he can uh, as a marketing manager can wisely uh, allocate the budget uh, looking in, in uh, into the situation as to uh, what will be the behavioral pattern or the that is related to the buying pattern of the uh, consum consumers so uh, examples of behavioral segmentation have uh, as indicated in it it is you know there are various aspects to it first is the occasion whether it is a regular occasion or a special occasion now with the regular occasion or the special occasion whatever the case is that is the various um, um, you know thought process it goes into thought process but occasion here you know it means like uh, buying on occasion is an important uh, form of behavioral segmentation buyers can be grouped uh, according to the occasions when they get idea make a purchase or use the uh, product for example if uh, say uh, greeting cards may be any you know maybe archie maybe hallmark whatever so these cards are made for almost every occasion to express oneself so that the consumers you know with the, for the, any occasion they uh, they go to the uh, retail outlets of uh, these uh, 
uh, car manufacturers and they you know and with the uh, and they buy according to the uh, suitability of the occasion uh, to express themselves so uh, number two is uh, benefit sort now for these the various uh, you know parameters which the ca consumer might look out for uh, in uh, buying a product or in uh, expressing the desire to buy the product could be like convenience whether he or she is buying for convenience whether buying for prestige economy in Indian context they, because the Indian housewives they are very particular about the economical aspects and economy is as to uh, they are looking out for certain uh, you know as to how much she is paying and what is uh, she is uh, getting value for money therefore quality and the service so there are various parameters now uh, for uh, several products are targeted towards the benefit sort by the customers uh, like for example if I said uh, in today's scenario the Colgate and the uh, Pepsodent uh, target the people who have sensitive teeth so this is you know so they are expressing their own way to target the same customers who are looking out for the uh, you know uh, for the uh, for the teeth you know for the sensitive teeth they have third is uh, user status user status uh, is like determining uh, uh, users uh, uh, you know the status will help figure out the best approach uh, for example the non users can be uh, converted into a user uh, so uh, you know f uh, like a potential user or a regular user maybe a first time user so it is very important for the marketing manager to understand the, as to what is the status of the person so that the strategies may be designed uh, if i talk about say uh, for example the promotional aspects so advertising so it is very important when we uh, make an advertisement we should focus upon as to whether we are focusing on the non users or whether we are we are focusing on the regular users maybe to retain those customers as well now the another important aspect is the usage rate the usage can be demonstrated in the form of uh, say heavy users medium users or lesser and uh, light users or a lesser user usage uh, you know for example, there are uh, customers who use beauty products in abundance while others are use less uh, of the beauty uh, products. So one has to understand if those who are into uh, fashion industry or those who are into uh, beauty products manufacturing. So uh, we, they should look out for the C to as to how they have to convert the uh, customers. So therefore, the many markets can be segmented into non-users, ex-users, potential users. Many companies are particularly interested in potential users, while small firms will try to attract the regular users. So the, for the big companies, you know, because they have got the more money to uh, flash out, and therefore they exercise on they re, they want to retain their customers and they want to have the potential users. So their the their promotional activities uh, are such to attract the potential, which is again a big market, and as well as to retain the uh, existing ones. Now it's the next one is the usage rate the, the user uh, sorry sorry you, uh, yeah loyalty status the loyalty status is none medium strong or absolute uh, a market can also be segmented by customer loyalty consumers can be loyal to brands maybe stores maybe companies uh, they uh, may be loyal to the salesman as well keeping aside the other aspects uh, to it and uh, the the customers can be therefore segmented on the uh, degree of their loyalness some customers are completely loyal they buy only one product or from the one store uh, so on and so forth. Uh, buyer's readiness stage. 
these are where you know the buyers they have you know sometimes they are, they do not for example they do not uh, they are unaware of the product they are unaware of the organization uh, maybe to an extent they are unaware of even their problems uh, number two they are aware informed interested desirous and enthusiastic so the most easy is the enthusiastic uh, uh, buyer who is at the verge you know as in when the uh, gets to know about the product the product is bought uh, the main aspect is the the customer the potential customers who are at present they are unaware uh, of, of the maybe of the product maybe of the organization so the the marketing manager's task is to convert these into uh, interested and desirous so any uh, at any time people are in different stages of readiness to buy the product that is uh, have written there they are into different readiness stage some people are unaware of the product some are aware inform and some want the product again attitude plays a very important role now positive attitude obviously uh, helps neutral is whether the customer is in readiness stage or not a negative attitude uh, this is uh, something this is is considered to be a, a big hurdle in this so the marketing manager's task therefore should be and uh, is to convert this uh, negative attitude into at least neutral or and to a certain extent into a positive attitude now these are you know these can be changed because behavior can be changed at any moment of time and therefore uh, we are we are uh, discussing we are trying to understand as to what what is the percentage of the uh people the type of people as far as attitude is concerned in the segment which we want to cater or we are looking at involvement now involvement is uh, if the person is having low involvement with the product will not buy it so and if the involvement with the product is high the uh, there are larger chances that the customer will buy the product so it is very important to uh, to understand uh, through the research also because if the low involvement if this can be raised to a higher level the it will result in the um, in the uh, much closer to the sales so this is uh, about the behavioral aspect of the uh, segmentation that is product related so it is it, these are more related with the, the association product related segmentation is the uh, the study of the product aspects with the aspects of the uh, customers as far as the geographic demographic and the psychographic and these two are then uh, if we are able to study this we can match and we can design our uh, marketing strategy to sell the product now basis for uh, segmenting industrial market this is one another aspect of it by and large the because we are focusing on the consumer products and the marketing has been written on consumer product more the focus is on consumer product but we cannot ignore the industrial market as well so a little brief understanding of what is is the basis for segmented and industrial market so what does it means to us when we talk about an industrial market uh, it is like a business market is a very broad spectrum Uh, consisting of a large number of diversified uh, categories product requirements the response to a market uh, stimuli service needs decision making process may, uh, and uh, maybe buying situations etc of these different categories vary vastly uh, it because the there the person is not there the requirement of the uh, industry the requirement of the organization uh, related to man the most it is related to the manufacturing aspect industrial buying behavior is more complex than consumer buying behavior because uh, the uh, industrial buying involves uh, one several people with different responsibilities so the decision maker is not one as in consumer cases we are talking about an individual uh, uh, customer though the individual customer can be influenced as being influenced will i'll discuss it later in the in my videos in the consumer uh, behavior but again 
the, the decision maker is the person, you know, a single person or the who is, has to make the decision. This is not the case in the industrial market where a lot many people, for example, the production manager is there, the inventory manager is there, the uh, quality uh, manager is there, uh, the raw material uh, aspects are there. So, before into uh, and very important aspect here is the customer in certain cases knows more about the product than the supplier because the customer exactly knows as to why uh, he or she is uh, buying an industrial product. This is business to business kind of uh, B2B uh, uh, marketing and therefore in, in this the both the parties they are uh, you know they know about the, uh, the, the the utility of the product and the uh, various uh, functions or the various benefits to be derived from the uh, product. Uh, another aspect is the choice may be limited by the organization selection criteria. For example, they talk about quality, so they don't know about as to what what should be the quality of the product. They know as to uh, if they want, for example, 200 pieces. Uh, per day from any machine. So, uh, they know they are looking out for certain things which uh, uh, serve the purpose of 200. If it is 150, probably uh, they will not be interested in buying. Maybe the product is good, maybe the prices may be suit, maybe the design of the uh, machine is good and so on and so forth. But unless and until because the organization they are looking out for say 200 uh, uh, pieces per day, so they will be more. Uh, their emphasis will be more on, uh, as I said, 200 numbers. So they won't compromise it. If you pulls down the the marketing manager, you know, pulls down the price and say, okay, fine, I'm going to uh, lower the prices and you buy. It. No, that will not work in the in the in this scenario. So as I said earlier, the customer is well informed and very rarely be influenced by advertising, price of schemes and other um, marketing gimmicks. Now, the, the important uh, aspect in this as to uh, the major important basis for is number one is the kind of business activity. Now, the market segmentation uh, by kind of business is generally used where uh, industries industrial houses rather produce several products or services for example insurance company market may segment uh, in uh, fire in marine in general so and so forth second is usual purchasing procedure industry buyers uh, are more uh, systematic buyers the decision to buy a major installation requires extensive market and other technical investigation. So there is a procedure. As I said earlier, it is not one person. There are, for example, if buying a machine, so uh, the quality control manager will be, you know, he will be, his stake will be more uh, in the decision making of buying or installing a machine. So the, the investi technical investigation some more. So that I said, the buyer is also very well informed about as to what he or, or what as an organization as to what they are buying. Now, geographical location of the user, the factors like uh, variation in ge geography, climate, maybe historical, traditional cause, consideration, variations. Uh, in a way, uh, industrial marketing is conducted in different areas. Uh, geography is whether the uh, the distance between uh, the seller and the buyer is uh, quite uh, wide. I mean, they are, it is, you know, we do not, uh, as in consumer market, it, it is very difficult for an industrial marketer or industrial organization selling, uh, say, machines to have their, uh, you know, outlets in every uh, nook and corner of the country. So uh, this again, because heavy, there are certain heavy and in largely in cases in the industrial products, it is heavy products also, heavy uh, products, large products also. So this also becomes one of the criteria to be taken into consideration 
and the size of the user, the size of the user here is the financial uh, aspect of the financial condition of the organization because in the industrial market, the, uh, the products they are usually uh, high price because of the technicalities involved in it and therefore uh, sometimes it is not in, within the reach of uh, small uh, manufacturers. So uh, that's all uh, in this uh, segment and the, uh, the, this is the completion of the market segmentation uh, chapter. Thank you.